Fred Bear once said, immerse yourself in the outdoor experience. It will cleanse your soul and make you a better person. Welcome to the Rooted Outdoors Podcast, where we dive deep into the mental, emotional, and spiritual side of hunting. And now your hosts, Dave Ashworth and Corey Bauman. Welcome to the Rooted Outdoors Podcast. I am your co-host, Corey Bauman. I'm with my awesome friend and co-founder of Rooted Outdoors, Dave Ashworth. Dave, what's going on, man? Uh, not too much, man. Not too much in the middle of turkey season, so it's busy. But uh, hey, give, give me an update good. on your turkeys. How many turkeys have you killed so far? Why would you ask that question? That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did take somebody out opening day. So I didn't hunt opening day. I, I took somebody out with me who had never been turkey hunting before. Um, I took him and then his dad came along uh, and he did end up shooting one. It was It was an awesome morning. It was like cold and just a beautiful morning. And so he ended up, he ended up shooting one. Um, we, we tried to get on a couple more for his dad. Didn't work out. Um, and then I found it a couple other times since seen some, um, but I haven't, haven't had anything, you know, come, come within range yet. So I haven't just haven't been out a ton this year, but opening gotcha. day was cool. It's always fun <clears throat> to take someone out on their first ever hunt and like, just oh, yeah. see the excitement that they have. Like, yeah, that's a lot of fun to me. I mean, that's what it's about, honestly. I mean, that really yeah. is. I mean, it's, yeah. we, I know we, you and I both share that, that there's sometimes way more success in seeing somebody else go out for the first time. And yeah, I, um, I love seeing the pictures too of some of the kids we've taken out like over the years and seeing them hunting now, you know, like with their dads and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just, it's just been cool. So, and just being way better hunters than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I can't, I mean, I can't speak for anything. I mean, I'm still chasing a Texas gobbler that's elusive. And yeah. I mean, this will be, so I've been here since 17. I didn't really hunt. So 18, 19, 20. I mean, it's been a while and I just cannot yeah, find these Texas gobblers, man. They're just, it's hard stuff, You're due. But, You're due. but I am due, but I also need to put in the time. I haven't put in enough time either. So yeah. But, so what, uh, what else is new with you, man? Before we, we'll dive into our guests in a second here, but any, anything new going on? Mm, nothing nothing really um just trying to get the boat ready still working on this boat mm. this project boat that i that i bought and uh you know the hotter it gets the more i want to be out there fishing so i want to get out there fishing and just trying to finish that up so hopefully i'll have it all painted and start mm -hmm. just like kind of building it out a little bit over the next couple of weeks and then um we're going on vacation in like mid-june we're going to the beach but it's like an awesome area for fishing and stuff and i'd love to like okay. take it with me yeah. into the bay or something like that but we'll see we'll see if it's yeah. ready it's a project it. it is it's cool and, though yeah jen's jen's definitely ready for it to be over <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better get moving yeah. when the wife's not happy then it's time uh, to get moving so. she's just you know she doesn't say anything she's very very tolerant but you know you can tell like her car being parked out in the in the driveway because my my boat is flipped over waiting to get painted in the garage, you know, <laughs> so those things, but, um, yeah. but yeah, man, let's, uh, let's jump in, man. Who's our awesome guest. Why don't you introduce our guest for tonight? Yeah, <laughs> I will. So just a little bit of kind of a, uh, backstory. So when we started the podcast, like we really wanted to dive into some of like the, the mental side of hunting. It's something that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, and as we were talking about and thinking about like people that could be on, you know, our guest tonight was because I've kind of followed his story over the past couple of years was someone that first came to mind, uh, someone who just gr just like defines just grinding it out, um, you know, public land, someone who's really chasing after his dreams, which is which is really inspiring. And so we're super excited to have Jake Bush on the podcast tonight. I'm going to let him introduce himself in a minute. But Jake, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I guess let's just first start with a, a basic introduction of yourself, who you are, you know, what we're, what you're up to, and then we'll we'll dive into, I definitely want to dive into your story a little bit uh, and kind of how you got to where you are today. But first, just maybe a quick intro on yourself. Yep. So my name is Jake Bush. I uh, live in Ohio currently. I'm originally from Western New York. Uh, I grew up probably a lot like pretty much every one of you uh, 
you know, hunting and fishing and spending time outdoors with family. And that was just a way of life. You know, I, I got my first compound bow when I was three years old and I've been shooting ever since. And I held my first buck in the back of a truck at like four years old. So mm. it's, uh, it's been an addiction for a long time. Um, and it's just grown over the years and that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's very cool. So is, was, was hunting, it sounds like hunting was something that was just part of your family and something that just you kind of were, were put pushed into as a kid and then just picked up and kind of ran with it from there. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it was necessarily pushed. Like, I mean, I think they yeah. would have let us make our own, our, our sure. decisions on it, but, um, I definitely took to it more than my siblings did. You know, they were much more athletic than me and I was growing up jealous of that, but you know, I've got my own thing now, so it works pretty good. Um, yeah. but yeah, I've just always had, you know, the love for hunting and being outside and, uh, really spending time out in the woods and it's, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's a part of me now, you know, like it's something that I do all the time. I crave it. I find peace and tranquility as well of, you know, chasing dreams. So yeah, yeah that's, it's a way of life. Yeah. So w- one thing that I want to dive into, so I know, you know, following you, you know, your the goals that you set for yourself with, with what you're looking for when you're in the woods, you know, you're, you're, you're chasing very unique animals, you know, very large, unique, like, you know, you're looking at big tracts of land and you're finding like the one basically in that piece of land. Like that's what you do. And you're, and you're good at doing that. How did you, how did you get to that point? You know, what was the journey to get there? Uh, I'm sure that it wasn't like that when you first kind of started, Um, but then did something switch or was it just like kind of a progression over time that got you to that point? So I think it's been a progression and it's been a progression of challenging myself. Um, you know, I started out just, I just wanted to kill deer when I was younger. Like that's, it didn't matter what weapon it was. None of that mattered. I just wanted to kill deer. And then I wanted to kill a buck and then I finally killed a buck and I was like, okay, I want to kill a bigger buck. Mm -hmm. And so I set my goal very young to kill, you know, like a, a nice New York eight point. That's what I wanted as a kid. And I shot that. And my grandpa and my dad were both like, that's the buck of your lifetime. But, you know, I, I wasn't happy with that. Like I I wasn't going to accept that that was the buck of my lifetime. I was like, okay, I've shot this. Now I want to reach a little higher and reach a little further. And I think that over time, it just, you know, snowballed into really that, that challenge and adapting as a hunter and trying to become the best version of myself and pushing me you know, I want to push myself as hard as I can physically, mentally, um, through, you know, physical training, through mental training, through just grinding, if you have to, whatever it takes. And moving to Ohio, um, my goals and standards weren't as high as they are now until I put a bunch of work in and I realized what was attainable. Mm -hmm. And so once I saw what was attainable here, it was like, okay, I want to shoot for the stars. You know, I want to go and chase what I think is going to be the most difficult thing to do. And I want to really push myself and test myself. And, you know, I've succeeded a couple of times. I've failed a little bit and it's, I love it. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. I just love it. Yeah. So was your, was your move to Ohio, you know, for just whitetail hunting or was there something else involved in that move? Or was it like, Hey, I think that there's, bigger opportunity here and this so this is where I'm this is where I want to head that's really what it was and I've always had a sense of adventure um I was in the service from 18 to 22 and I had my Mm -hmm. choice of base and so I picked Montana I was stationed in Great Falls Montana you know and Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in the mountains and I spent a lot of time traveling and you know like uh solo trips into the mountains by myself hunting elk and I love that and I love that aspect of it and you know I went back to New York after the service and I bought like the typical back, you know, back 30, I had like 35 acres and I was doing some food plots and I hung a bunch of stands and that's great, but I didn't get that sense of adventure from it. And so after a couple of years, I started to get itchy. You know, I didn't have a ton of vacation where I worked. So I, it, it wasn't really possible to travel as much as I wanted to, to hunt. And I decided, you know what, I want to travel more to hunt and I want to pursue this more than I am here. I want to be able to just like chase it 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. So it really came down to applying to, um, jobs in a bunch of States that I thought would be good whitetail States. So Wisconsin, Ohio, Iowa, 
Illinois. And then it was a matter of what job I thought would support me, but also give me the best chance to actually chase after that. Mm-hmm. And I'm here. Yeah. Man, that's so cool to like, I don't know. It just encourages me to see people that have a passion for something so much that they're willing to basically just do whatever it takes to go after that. You know, I think a lot of people quite frankly are like scared to do that in many ways. Um, and to see someone like you, and I kind of knew so, some of that already just by following everything that you've done. Um, but it's so cool to see like you, you knew that you, you know, wanted to get to one of these States to, to, you know, kind of achieve the the highest level of whitetail hunting that you could. And then you kind of, you, you, found that that was your biggest passion you shaped your life around that like i mean that's that takes a lot that takes a lot of guts to do that too not just like hey i really love this i'm going to do it like it takes a lot of guts to do that um and i'm sure that it's been quite a journey uh mm-hmm. you know since you since you've gotten out how, how long have you been out there so i've been here for it, it's coming up on three years in june okay. Okay. and uh yeah it's been a journey you know there's been a lot of ups and downs but what i tell everybody is I sacrificed basically a year of the lifestyle that I had back in New York by coming here to be able to build my life around a dream that I have. So, you know, now I have a family, I've got a little boy, I've got Mm. the home of my dreams in Ohio based around whitetails. Mm. And so that little bit of sacrifice at the time, you know, looking back on it, it was nothing. So it's been, it's been great. Yeah. So I have a quick question about Ohio specifically. I feel like you know, even growing up in Pennsylvania, you know, Ohio, not so much anymore. Like I think recently it's, it's good. It's a well-known whitetail state, you know, for big bucks, but like, I think growing up, like I, it was kind of like a sleeper state. So had, had you hunted Ohio previous to you moving out there or was it just that you kind of did your research and talked to people? Like, how did you pick like that was one of the states? So I hunted Ohio for one week prior ever and that was the only time i've ever done anything whitetail in the state and i i came down here and i just fell in love with it i was like this is this is where i want to be you know it's endless public land there's a a lot of areas that are hard to get to there's a lot of big deer they're not behind every tree like everybody thinks they are but there are a lot of big deer down here so uh yeah that's pretty much it yeah sweet yeah that that is one thing that i think people don't realize is like Oh yeah. I'll just go to Ohio and then, uh, I'll set up in the woods in a public land and then I'll just smoke a giant like everybody else. Like that's, that's not how it works. Right. It takes a lot, especially the deer, you know, some of the deer that you're going after like that, that takes a lot, a lot of work to make that happen. So what, what do you think? And well, this will kind of maybe transition a little bit into some of the, uh, just like the, the mental battles and the things that we go through and the, kind of some of the intangibles it takes to have success, but you know, what do you think? Cause you, you compared to a lot of other hunters, you, you've had a lot more success than, than most people. Um, you just, you just have, what do you think separates you from, from a lot of other people that maybe have a similar goal of what they're going after, but just aren't, aren't able to achieve it? I think the biggest thing is your mindset and that tells a lot, but you know, the ability to set specific goals, the ability to stay focused, um, the ability to accept failure, but learn from it. You know, like I know a lot of guys that will just hide that failure. Like they'll, they'll try to push off the failure and like not think about it. And it's like, no, it's important to think about it. And for me anyways, it's important for me to think about when I fail, as long as I have a lesson to be learned and I can grow from that. And that's something that's really helped me a lot is like, you know, every step backwards, I'm like, okay, I, I know what not to do now. So I'm going to try not to make that mistake again. And, uh, you know, it really comes down to, it, it sounds cliche, but just grit in general, you know, and that's through like through scouting, you know, it's, it's not easy to go out in the woods as much as you love it. It's not easy to go out in the woods and scout 150 or 200 days a year. And I know some guys do a lot more than that. And that to me is just absolutely crazy. Um, but it's not an easy thing. You know, you have to have discipline to do that. You have to in some way, shape or form be in good physical shape. Um, you know, it's, 
it's a lot more than just having the tactics down. And, you know, you can listen to just about any podcast out there and get the tactics side of it pretty quick. Like I would say within a couple of po- good podcasts, you know, if I listen to yeah. a Steve Shirk and Andy May, a Johnny Stewart, mm-hmm. guys like that, like I can pick up the tactics quick, very quick, but it's a matter of going out and actually doing it and learning for yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, um, re- what I see is I'll see the, a lot of people just don't put the time in scouting and preparing for season and they get to season, they hunt hard, but it's a lot more difficult to have success. If you don't have like, you don't have plans, you know what I mean? It's, that's something that I'm, I'm super focused on, like my specific plans, especially early season. you know, I have like an exact game plan that I've formulated over the last 364 days. So for me, I would say that's the biggest thing. It's just like mindset in general. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, that is the reason that we wanted to start this podcast because like the X's and O's, the strategy, like it's out there. And, and the, quite frankly, I think a lot of people actually know what they're supposed to be doing, right? Like most people know what they need to do and how to kill more mature deer but there's a very, very small percentage of people that are willing to put in the work and, and, and have the ability to execute it, um, it, it from what I've seen. And that is where that mental, you know, side of it comes that grit that you talked about. So, um, I want to try to dive deeper in that a little bit more. So is that something for you that, um, you feel like has just always been inside of you? Is it something that you've had to intentionally focus on and work on? Um, you know, how, how has that become such a part of, of who you are today? What has that journey been? Um, yeah, I guess just leave it at that. So I think there's a couple different types of hunters. There's hunters that, you know, they enjoy it. They do it with their family. They, um, you know, they, they don't really care about all those aspects of it they're just out there to have a good time and that's great that's a really important aspect of hunting but then there's people who it's it's a lifestyle for them and i would say that if you talk to most of them including myself it's just it's i have so much love for it that i don't find a ton of it it doesn't take a lot of effort for me to go do it you know like i i find so much enjoyment in like finding a buck's bed and picking the hair out of a bed and Mm getting to the bed and laying in it and saying, okay, he can see this and this, and I can get to this specific point because I know he's going to feed here this time of year. And that whole chest mash, like it just, it's an, it's instinctive to me. It's just something that drives me. And really the, the grit for me is like the physical aspect, especially hanging cameras in the middle of summer or scouting in the middle of summer when it's 90, 95 degrees outside. And there, you know, it's, thick and there's snakes and spiders and that side of it's more challenging for me but I would say in general I think it's a matter of really how much you love it and how passionate you are about it and then it just becomes easier you know if I was if I didn't love it as much as I did I wouldn't spend that much time out there and I don't think that I really don't know how much even grit would help me because if if you don't love it I don't know how you know I don't know how much you're going to attack that yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you have to you have to have this passion for it that in the hardest times like that passion is still there or or what do you like what are you going out the next day for? Like what is going to make you wake up the next day? What is going to make you go out and scout in the 95 degrees? Like there has to be something driving that uh, like a passion there that drives that or it's just not it's just not going to happen. Um so, you, you know, you talk about having this deep love and this passion for hunting. Um, kind of transition off of that. So how, how do you define success when you're out hunting? I'll just leave that kind of open-ended for now. So I was listening to uh, your podcast with Steve earlier, and I heard mm-hmm. this question, and I was thinking about it in the truck on the way home, and I, that's it's difficult for me because I mean, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily in killing the target animal I'm after. Like, yes, that's mm-hmm. successful to me, of course. but I, I, I can't really measure it like that because it, for me, it's a matter of like, I almost have 
a certain amount of work and I have to like push myself to the limits before I have that success for it to feel right. And if it comes too easy, it just, it, it doesn't feel as successful to me. So it's beyond the kill, which if that makes sense, you know, it's, it it's about pushing myself to the limits and then succeeding at that. And, you know, even a bad hunt can be successful. And I'm a little bit different than some people where, like I was saying earlier, I like to accept that I had failure. I like to, you know, I, I'll, I'll admit it. Like I failed today. There's still success to find in that. And I definitely have lessons to learn, but it was a failure. You know, I was out there for a specific reason. Right. And I didn't accomplish the goal that I had set for myself that day, but this is going to help me achieve that goal possibly tomorrow or the day after. So yeah, that's a tough one. It's, it's hard for me to define success. Sometimes, sometimes I think it's, um, it's stepping stones too, or it's like you just mentioned every day, you might have a different goal or sometimes you, I know Dave and I have talked about times where like, you might have not killed the deer, but like, you know, you beat the deer that day, like something else happened, you know, whether it was, you know, you know, you made a noise you shouldn't have, or you, you know, you moved when you shouldn't have, like whatever it might've been, but like you had the deer where you wanted him, like you beat him. Right. And there's, I'm sure you've had that, that happen too, where, you know, you beat him. It's just, you didn't, you didn't seal the deal totally, but there was a win because that was a step in the right direction. Dave had that happen. I think it was last year, Dave, right? Like you, we laid out this whole plan for Dave to get into a spot and get across a Creek and get up top. And he ended up seeing the deer that we planned on him, you know, killing that day. It just didn't work out, but he, we felt like there was a huge success with that. So, it, you know, is there times when you feel like that's, that there is moments like that for you too. Yeah. And that that's beyond hunting, to be honest. I mean, say that I have a really good trail camera pole in a spot. I get that same feeling, you know, I get almost more excited about that than mm -hmm. having that buck in front of me sometimes, or say that you go up glassing, you know, in the summertime and you glass a giant buck or you do it three or four times. And you're like, okay, you know, every Southwest wind I've got him in the corner of this field and there's a Northeast knob on the top of that Ridge. That's thick. I know he's up there so I can cut him off. Like that, that to me is one of those stepping stones one one of those wins or like an observation set. I get the same feeling from that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that you mentioned was like how we react to a failure. If we react, you know, because the reality is like, if, if our goal is to, for you to kill a super mature deer uh, and you don't do it, there is a, there is, some aspect of failure in that right in that hunt in that specific hunt there is as some aspect of failure but it sounds like to me for you that how you react to that failure can be successful if that makes sense it's kind of like all intertwined it sounds weird to say that but within the failure can be success because of how you react to it and because of what you do with that failure and how you use it does that does that make sense am i saying that correctly yes and you you that's way better than i could say that so <laughs> um that's great but yes that's exactly it and it's like it's, it's a matter of just accepting it and learning from it and mm -hmm. you know growing from that and that's sometimes more successful yeah um so i know um like while well, i'll ask this question to you and then we'll dive deeper into it you know how does uh, confidence factor into what you're doing? I know a lot of hunters, especially people who seem to have a lot of success, they always talk about confidence and being confident when they're going into the woods and confident where they're setting up and with the shot. And they're just, everything about what they're doing is confidence. Does, does that play a big role in what you're doing? Yes. And that is one of the biggest aspects of my hunting style is just being confident in what I'm doing and believing in my system that I have and believing in myself as a hunter and, you know, the lessons that have helped me grow over time to put me in the situation that I'm in. Um, you know, when I was younger, what I would do is I would actually mask that confidence and I'll still do that every once in a while when I need to, where I can, I have the ability to put on like a, a mask of confidence and, and I can, that deer's there. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to scout my way in and I'm going to get to this point and I'm going to kill him. When in reality, I have no idea if that deer's there. 
but and giving myself like that false sense of confidence makes me hunt harder and smarter on the way in sometimes. So I'll find myself not being lackadaisical. You know, I'm looking for very specific signs of a deer being there. I'm, I'm more in tune with my environment. I'm walking slower, you know, like my entire approach is different. If I'm confident in my setup where if I'm going somewhere and I'm, you know, like a brand new to the area, or if I haven't done my homework and I think that a deer might be in there, maybe I walk past that hot sign, or maybe I don't notice the squirrels eating Oak flat where there's a buck bed above that. And all the squirrels are there in the woods because that's the only Oak flat that's hot. And now I just walk past it. So being confident for me helps me be a better hunter. And then obviously the more success you have with that, that snowballs and it just becomes, you know, bigger and bigger. And you're learning more and more every time you go out. And, uh, yeah, that that's the biggest factor for me, hands down. Yeah. So, you know, you talked about hunts where like, maybe you don't have all the pieces together, but you can kind of put on this mask of confidence that you called it that to, to almost trick yourself into, uh, being as focused as possible for a lot of, a lot of other hunts. I'm assuming that that's not the case. Like, you know what you're doing going in there. So how, where does your confidence come from for those hunts? Is it just because you've done it so many times? Is it your preparation leading up to it? Is it a combination of things? Where's that confidence coming from for those? So I really think it's believing in myself as a hunter and that's, I I try to always trust my gut and even like say that I get to cross a crossroads in the woods and I'm like, should I go this way or this way? My gut's telling me to go left, but my, it's telling me to go right. And I'm really considering going right. I will always choose my gut instinct and right or wrong, succeed or fail. I'm going to learn more lessons off of doing that. And it's going to help me next time more than anything else, you know, that's I've learned a lot is for some reason, the more that you do it and the more experiences you have, the more your gut tends to be right. Yeah. Do you, at this point, like where you're at in your hunting, do you ever go into a setup and you're like in there, you're set up and you're like, I don't know if I'm in the right spot. I'm not sure. Or are you every hunt that you go into your, your, have that level of confidence like i'm in the spot like this is where i need to be um and if it's the first one you know and then you get there will you then move like just walk through that because a lot of people that i hear like even for me like sometimes i'll go into a spot and sometimes you're really confident you're like i'm in i know i'm where i need to be like i have all the pieces laid out this is where i need to be sometimes i'll go in i'm just speaking for me where i'm like "Ah, like i I don't know like i'm just kind of here I guess this is where I should be either I'm running out of time or I got lazy. Like, what is that? I'd like to, you know, compare and contrast that to you. And like, what is your mindset when you're setting up and you are in a spot? Like, what does that look like for you mentally? So if I can't find the confidence in my setup, like walking through the woods, you know, let's take last year, for example, I had Mm -hmm. a really good idea that there was a deer bedding in a certain area and I left the state for about a week and I came back. And I went in under the assumption that an oak flat was still hot. Now, if I would have got back to that oak flat and it wasn't hot, I wouldn't have had the confidence to set up there. And I really don't like wasting time during season. So generally what I do, or like even wasting sits. So generally what I'll do is if I'm not confident in the setup, I won't even set up and hunt. What what I'll normally do is either vacate and then go like glass for the rest of the night somewhere else. Or I'll keep moving around until I find something that makes me confident. Or even in some circumstances, I'll take my tree stand off my back. And even because I film, I'll just set my bow down and I'll go look for something that makes me confident for the next time, like maybe for the next day. Mm. You know, I really, I can't sit in a tree not confidently very often. And in my home state where I'm scouting. Now, if I'm out of state, it's different because I'm just trying to locate deer, right? Sure, and that's sure. that's like a very unconfident thing normally. Like I, I get out there and I have no idea where I want to be or what I'm doing or who's there. But in my home state, I really like to secure that confidence before I take the stand off my back. Yeah. It's really interesting. I hear that a lot from a lot of people that I 
would look up to as you know as it relates to hunting where if they're if they're not like confident in where they're setting up like you know won't even hunt won't even hunt that evening won't even we'll just do something else we'll use that time more effectively you know uh, for me i'll just speak for me and then Corey, i don't know if you want to dive into this as well but you know i i only I get out a decent amount, but I only get a certain amount of days to hunt. And I feel like when I have to, when I go out, like I, I, I need to be in a tree because uh, that's like my, my chance to go out, I guess that makes sense. Um, but I do think that it probably would be better use of time to gain more confidence, either scouting around or checking out another spot or doing something else for, and cause you, I'm probably not going to get much out of that hunt because I'm not in the right spot. Probably not going to see much. I'm already losing, lacking confidence. Um, Corey, I don't know if you want to dive yeah. in on this one, but this is an interesting, interesting topic to me that I know I personally have struggled with this. I think from, yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's evolved. The, the mindset of it has evolved to one, probably experiences I've had. And then also just people I've met like, and been around more people that are doing things that growing up I might not might thought of was like a, against you know the norm or the tradition or whatever and like when you you know I think early on like I would go sit and then I'd be afraid to like like if I was in the tree already I'm like well man I can't get out now like I'll spook deer and then like you know they'll be gone forever right and you know that that's not true I mean yes you can pressure deer and bump deer and all that stuff but I am way more likely just from experience and talking to other people that, you know, kill big deer. It's like, you can move. In fact, I, you know, it was th it's been three years now, but um, my second year here in Texas, I killed a public land buck and I moved like two hours into the sit because the movement was happening literally 80 yards from me. And I moved and two hours later I killed this deer. And if I didn't move, I wouldn't have killed the deer. So it's, just an example, but like, I, I don't think like growing up, but if I was younger, I don't think I would have done that. I think I would have just stayed put and said, well, sooner or later, they're going to come my way, but you have to kind of be in the action, right? So you have to feel good about it. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's changed for me over the years um, to kind of just go, you know, some of those things we grew up learning just aren't true. They're just not true in some cases. Yeah. And um, you kind of have to, you know, to, to get around bigger deer and stuff like that, you have to risk a little bit more sometimes and be willing to kind of bump a deer and, you know, they'll come back or, or maybe they won't. Yeah. So Jake, uh, for just curious, your take for someone like me, I, probably uh, more people are in my situation where they get to hunt, you know, a couple times a week during the whole hunting season. Um, you know, for, for this specific topic, when I mean, you're talking about the confidence and setting up and not setting up, you know, what, what, what would be your uh, advice for someone like me and a lot of other people listening, um, you know, as they're navigating through the hunting season where they want to be in a tree stand, but they also are, you know, maybe chasing a mature deer and want to have success and, you know, setting up versus, continuing to scout, gaining that confidence, like what, what would be some advice that you would give someone, you know, you could direct it at me or other people listening. So I would say number one would be, don't be afraid of failure. You know, failure is a good thing. And I, I've seen a lot of people that are like, they're going through that stage of trying to gain their confidence. They don't quite have it. And they're afraid to maybe even dive a little too, or dive a little too deep sometimes. And they'll sit back purposely because they're just, they don't want to push that button. They don't want to push that threshold. Yeah. Failure is one of the best things that you can have in the whitetail world as crazy as that sounds, but there's no greater way to learn lessons than failure. Yeah. And so don't be afraid of it, you know, take it head on and try to push the limits as much as you can. Um, you know, try to find little ways to, to gain confidence. You know, if you don't, if you can only hunt two days a week, well, maybe you can glass a couple of days after work or, you know, there's find something that's going to help you a little bit. Maybe you have seasonal data on, uh, you know, I've got this deer on trail camera the last two years between October 24th and 27th hitting the scrape. 
so there is the habit besides like the real time, you know, hunt 10 times in a row to gain that confidence. Yep. Um, you know, put your own system together. Everybody's going to have their own system. Learn from your failures, learn from any experiences that you have, and just make sure that you're having fun in the process of that, you know, don't get frustrated. Frustration is the worst thing. You know, I've been extremely frustrated before and there's nothing worse. You know, we only get to hunt whitetails, you know, a month, two months, three months out of the year, enjoy it while it lasts. You know, there's, there's only so much that time. So don't get overly caught up in chasing the giant buck, you know, just have fun on top of it. Yeah. Good point. That's a good point. So to kind of dive into that one a little bit more um how are because the reality is most times we go into the woods um we're not going to achieve the goal that we're looking for we're going in to kill something most times that's not going to happen how do you continue to uh, get up the next day and keep going? Like what keeps you going and how do you continue to not only keep going, but continue to enjoy it and have fun in the process when day after day, it's, you know, you, you set out to achieve a goal and it's not happening, not happening, not happening. Now, of course you could go out opening morning and shoot one in an hour, right? Could happen. Um, but in general, there's going to be a lot of time that, that elapses throughout a season, you know, for, or a chunk of a season when you're just, it's not exactly where you want to be. So for you, how do you just keep going and keep having fun? So there is a grit aspect of that. You know, you do at some point have to grit your teeth and just continue to go. Yep. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of different things, okay. but um, you can mix it up as much as possible. So, you know, try not, to, what I normally do is I try not to sit the same spot more than a couple times a year, you know, I'll start bouncing around, or even if it's within like the same general location after one deer, I'll go to certain areas, basically eliminating certain things. Like if I, if I lose the confidence in the deer I'm after, which has happened a couple of times, I'll start trying to basically process of elimination to find them again. Um, you know, it's, it's fun hunting through the stages of the year where early they're on a pattern and then they start their pre-rut scraping and then they get into like the rut time where you're on terrain features. Like that's all helping mix it up on top of it. Um, getting, having opportunities as much as possible, as far as like even shooting does, you know, that can, that can help break up the monotony of not killing anything for a while killing a buck anyways um yeah i would i would yeah. say that anyway. yeah those are i mean those are good actionable steps that i can relate to you know yeah to, and, and that's another way to gain confidence too like shooting dough shooting a dough right that'll get your confidence going hey well i went out shot a dough now i'm feeling more confident i feel like i can get out here and, and do something right um but then also mixing up where you're going to uh I, I love like, you know, I, I got into like mobile hunting, you know, the, the past probably five years before it was like, you got your couple tree stands and then you just go out and sit those over and over again. And when you sit the stand and you don't see anything, you sit the stand, you don't see anything. It's like that can really wear on you where at least if you're in different spots, there's that excitement of like, what could be right? Because you don't really have anything to go off of before. I've never sat here before. Even if it's just, you know, 50 yards over from where you were before, it's like, what could be here? Maybe this, maybe this is the spot that I needed to be. Um, we're sitting the same spot over and over again. I know I've done that and that can get, especially if you're really trying to like sit a lot. Um, one, that's probably not the best tactic, but that can also get pretty, pretty draining after a while. So I think just moving around is just, keeping things fresh can keep you excited just, just by seeing new things sometimes. Yeah. You got to save those old, like wooden, the old wooden tree stands. You see, you got to save those for the first day of rifle in Pennsylvania. And that's, that's right. What, that's why you that's use right. those for. That's why saddle hunting's I think been so while well, I'm still learning it. I think it's been attractive to me just because I can pop around. I'm really never in the same spot unless I feel like I'm on something, but like I'm always moving yeah. around and it's easy to move around, you know? Yeah. Um, 
so I don't have too many more questions, but I do have one um, that I'm always interested to hear an answer to. Um, so I'll just ask the question. I've asked a lot of other guests this, but at its deepest level, why do you hunt? So I think that it's really for, for me, it's about pushing myself and growing as a person more than anything. Um, you know, I, I love the woods. I love the outdoors. I love the adventure side of it. That's who I am. And I just love pushing myself and I love like reaching for certain goals. And I just love the entire process in general. You know, like if you make it a 365 day year process, you're always trying to just get better and better and evolve. And I love that. I love that side of it on top of everything. Yeah, it's, it's true. There's so much to learn too, from like life lessons from being in the woods. Um, one last question and then I'll, and then we can start to wrap, um, you know, for, for Corey and I, you know, hunting can be a very, for us be a very spiritual experience. You know, we, we feel like when we're out in the woods, like we're, we feel this connection to, uh, our creator being in his creation and all the, all the things you get to see, you know, for, for you, like, is that, is there some sort of a connection? Is there a spiritual side to it? Um, or not? And if there's not, that's totally fine. That's just where Corey and I are. I'm just, again, just like to hear people's, people's perspectives on, on that side of things. Yeah, no, I, I would say that I have more of a connection in the woods and scouting and, um, you know, being in a tree stand anywhere else, if I'm being completely honest. And it's, uh, something where I, I didn't really grow up, you know, around religion a whole lot or anything or around like the spiritual side of things, but it seems like I find myself diving more and more into that out in the woods. Um, I've had a couple different scenarios that have happened to me. You know, I lost my grandpa and that was one of the hardest things that's ever happened to me. He was like a dad and, uh, we hunted and grew, you know, I grew up hunting with him. That was our thing. He filmed me as a kid hunting and, you know, that's, we talked about it all the time and I lost him and I dedicated next buck I killed to him. And that was when I moved to Ohio and worked all year long and day two, you know, and he kicked an absolute giant buck in the butt for me and sent it down to me. And, uh, immediately, you know, I, I'm literally thinking about Papa as this deer is walking in and I shot it and I just, I sat in the stand and talked to Papa, you know, I'm out in the middle of Southern Ohio with no cell phone service by myself, you know, I had at that point, I'd quit my job back home. I sold my house. I was living in a 600 square foot apartment. And uh, all I could think about was him, you know, and he was right there. Like he was right beside me. And it's funny. I haven't, I don't think I've told anybody this story besides my family members and they've seen the raw video, but in that first video, I know it's really blurry, but when I drew my bow back, I knocked way out of the way to the right. And I'm at full draw. And I said, well, forget the camera. I'm not, I don't, I don't care about it at this point. Yeah. And somehow that camera swung in frame and the deer was center frame. Perfect shot. <laughs> Couldn't have been more perfect. And when my brother watched that, he was like, how did your camera swing back? And I was like, I have no idea. And he's like, that was Papa. <laughs> wow. That was definitely Papa. I love it. And uh, so that was the first story. And then last year I lost my dad and I had this spot in mind that I was going to take my dad hunting. You know, it was the same thing grew up hunting together and both of these occurrences happened way too close together but um so I I he I lost him the the week before season and so I went home and I had a week to be home with family and I just terrible but I got to come back down here and the day I came back down we just had like this rare northeast wind that we never get we never get a northeast wind in Ohio like very rare and uh I put a move on a deer that I was going to save for him and shot it at six o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon, first day of the year. I mm -hmm. mean, it was wow. just, and same thing, you know, all I could think <laughs> about was dad, he was right yeah. there. So both of those occurrences on the first and second day of the season on the two biggest deer of my life, that it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, Yeah. but, uh, but yeah, so I definitely feel like there's something there. 
And like I said, I don't, I didn't grow up around that. So I don't know what that is, but I feel something and it's important to me at this point. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that too. Yeah. That, 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 that's cool. You would, you would share that with us. That means a lot. That's those, man. I, like I literally had goosebumps here in those stories, man. Like that's so cool. Like that. It's crazy how like hunting and we talk about this a lot, but hunting and like the camaraderie that comes with hunting um, and then the memories that you build and then how they can just like keep flooding back in. And you experience that in like the most profound way twice. Um, but those are things that people that aren't spending time in the outdoors and aren't in hunting, like they just, they won't get to experience that. And it's, mm-hmm. It can be like it can be like really life changing, honestly. Yeah. Um, and those are those are really cool things. So, man, I I appreciate you sharing those things with us. Um, th- those are some cool stories. It's really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Corey, any other any other final questions? I do have one last question. Let's if you listen to our podcast, he might yeah. know what question it is. But I'm he might. The anyway. more we do these podcasts, he might. Know uh, what it's the not going to be as much of a surprise, but I'm I'm going to go for it. But you go ahead, Corey. No, that was that was going to be my question. Okay, you ahead. do. It. Yeah, no, you do it. You do it tonight. You get the last question. <laughs> so, Jake. So, first of all, thank you again for joining us tonight, man. It's been awesome. Looking forward to getting to know you a little bit more. Um, And, uh, you know, we do have one question we ask everyone and it's a, it's probably the most serious question that you've had all night. Um, and that is when you're in the woods, what is your favorite snack of choice? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty simple. I like, I don't have anything crazy. I like venison jerky. I like cereal Mm -hmm. bars. I like uh, peanut butter and honey burritos. I'll, I'll eat just wait. What? Else. Wait. What was the last one? What was the peanut last butter, one? Peanut butter, peanut butter, and honey on a on a tortilla on a tortilla wow. wrap. Interesting. I've never heard like, of that one. Oh yeah, high energy. It gets you going. Yeah, I'm bad at that. I could get down with that. Okay, it's <clears throat> a new one. I, yeah, you know, I find that these guys that are in shape, you know, cause I'm not, I'm not really that in shape right now. Although I was in shape a couple of years ago. I went on an elk hunt in Colorado and I had to get in shape for that, but I feel like I've fallen off the handle. All these guys that are in shape are eating like healthy snacks. And we're like, we're like just filling <laughs> our faces with gummy bears and you know, whatever, whatever, <laughs> peanut butter, M&Ms. Yeah, I've you're got like... a thought process. The, the gummy bears freeze in November. And so oh. I don't like to take them. They get stuck to my teeth. That's oh, true. It's true. It's true. It is true. Yeah. You, you do have to, you do have to be careful with those. And then if it gets too hot, that's no good either. Then you oh, get a little, yeah, little melting yeah, action. So good. I'm going to have to try one of these, uh, peanut butter, honey in a, in a, like might a be new might yeah. be thing. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in this one. I'm interested. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It's not uh it's not Sam Soholt level. Have you seen where he had the Yeti no. with like, no, he had like a hot uh, apple pie and then a cold <laughs> thing of vanilla ice cream in the field. <laughs> no way. Yeah, oh yeah. The whole nine yards. Now that's serious. Yeah. Now that's, that's, that's serious <laughs> stuff. Right? That's right, we're, yeah. we're not quite that far, but now that you said that Corey, we'll probably do that next year. <laughs> that's, yep. Yeah. I love, yeah. I love to love to pack. I, well, the pack and cook. I got into duck hunting a couple of years ago. And so now the thing is like, we'll go out and like, before the sun comes up, I like literally will pull out a, I'll pull out like a burner and I'll make, you know, breakfast burritos for everybody. And then we sit there and eat breakfast burritos before we get in the blind. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> Beat that. Um, well, Jake, thank you again, man, for coming on and, and sharing. Um, yeah, just what, what you've done and, and the success that you've had, it, is awesome but i think just your mentality um and the way that you go about it uh, is very challenging to me and i'm sure a lot of other people listening but also very inspiring too um so we appreciate you just coming on and sharing with us sharing some of your journey and, and diving into um you know really what has led to that success because i can tell you it is has not been by accident uh, it has been very intentional, the things that you've done, um, and to learn and to kind of dig into your mind a little bit, uh, has been cool. So thank you again for for coming on and chatting with us. Yeah. I appreciate it guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Cool. Corey, you want to close, close this out here? Yeah, absolutely. You want, you want me, uh, let me just close this down or yeah, sounds good.
Okay. Um, so, uh, Jake, do you mind if we just say a quick prayer as we yeah, close down? Of okay. Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so I'll say a prayer and then we'll just, uh, we'll close it out. Dear Lord, thank you so much for just, uh, putting us, putting us with Jake tonight and just allowing him to come on the podcast tonight and just share, um, just his journey, his, his life journey. Um, we're just, uh, we just feel so blessed to be able to hear, hear his stories about uh, his grandfather and his father and how, you know, you kind of nudged, uh, nudged them a little bit down to visit him during two hunts. And we're just, um, again, just, just, um, just blessed to, to be able to meet Jake and hear his story, um, and be able to do this, uh, and have this platform, this technology that you've put in front of us to be able to do this and meet new people and have them share, uh, share their hunting and in their mental journeys and their, and their spiritual journeys. And we're just thankful for all that. Um, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Jake, before we jump off, how, how do people, how can people follow you? How can people get in touch with you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at the Jake Bush or on Facebook at Jake Bush. And then I do have a YouTube as well. It is legends of the hunt. Legends of the hunt. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you again, man, for coming on and thank you everybody out there for, for tuning into this podcast tonight. We appreciate it. And we will see you all in the next one. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with everything happening at Rooted Outdoors.